Okay, this video is about the installation of the Stuart Aquatron Waterstill A4000D. The first thing to do is to check, after unpackaging, is to check that all the bits are actually in the box. First off, we've got the hose assembly kit, which consists of a 16mm uh, a hose, 1m long. You've got a 8mm hose, 300, um, 300mm long and two 8mm um, hoses at 1m each. You should also have seven tie laps. You should also have a reservoir water level sensor. You've got a boiler level controller from the rear and the boiler level controller from the front. You've got two heaters, two condensers and the unit itself with a perspex lid. To remove the perspex lid Place your fingers underneath on the grip, lift up, and the actual perspex lid can come off. Inside, you will notice there will be lots of packaging in there, and the easiest thing to do is to remove the packaging easily is to take the actual side off and the lid off itself. So we'll do that first. We'll take the lid off, which is six screws, and then the lid juts just lifts off. side panel which is six screws again undo the screws and that will just lift off the packaging that's inside can then easily be removed inside we have two boilers and the hose is already connected up um, you will see that we've got ties on the front and rear boiler they should be snipped um, when assembling the actual unit itself. For the purpose of this demonstration I will leave them tied. The first thing to do when setting up the, uh, the unit um, is to remove the front boiler. The first thing you, you must do is to is remove the metal thermostat which is inside the thermostat glass tube inside the boiler. To do this just pull the thermostat metal bit out gently so the first thing we do is remove the retaining springs and the boiler can be lifted straight out the next thing to do is to check the the o-ring seal and the stabilising seal on the rear boiler itself. Make sure they're intact and fitted properly. We will then fit the rear condenser. To do this, we attach the 8mm 1 meter tubing to the, the drain outlet of the condenser. Like so. And that is tie wrapped. To fit it, we go from the top, that then fits on top of the boiler vapour tube itself. The outlet should be facing forward. When you place it on top, you will feel a slight resistance. You should then push it down slightly, so there's about three quarters of an inch gap between the condenser and the boiler. The condenser outlet hose is then fed through the rear of the small holes, like so. The outlet should be fe facing the front and the two other inlet and outlet uh, connectors need to be parallel at the rear. What thing to do is to connect the rear boiler water level sensor. Now the sensor itself consists of a um, rotor flow stopcock which should be fastened down so it's closed like so. In the tube itself is the actual float switch which is connected to an electrical connector and here we have the boiler coupling. 
Uh, the boiler coupling, we need to take one of the split nuts off and the central portion. And we're left with a split nut on there and the sleeve itself, which is fitted inside. We then fit our 300mm um, length of 8mm tubing to the side arm of our rear bob boiler level control. And again, that is tie wrapped. We then connect the 8mm earth spigot hose assembly to our rear boiler level control. That basically just fits on the outlet like so and it is tie wrapped as well. We connect our 1 meter of 8mm tubing to our 8mm earth spigot hose assembly like so. And again, this is tie wrapped around here. We then thread through our 8mm tubing through the next available hole, like so. What to do is to connect our rear boiler level control to our boiler itself. First of all, we put our split nut onto the boiler and also the centre portion of our coupling. We then must make sure that the rubber sleeve is fitted inside the boiler level control and the boiler itself. So, and we then connect up our coupling. We then connect our electrical connector from our float switch up to our connector in the chassis. Next thing to do is to refit our front boiler. So we put it in place like so and we will then retain it with our retaining springs. We then refit our thermostat into our boiler. We then connect our condenser to our front boiler, same as the, the rear one, it's fitted on like so. When you feel some resistance, push down slightly to create a seal to about three quarters of an inch above the boiler. Again, the outlet is facing the front. We then connect our 300mm 8mm hose from our rear boiler level control to the outlet of our condenser. Again, this will be tie wrapped. Around. We will then fit our front boiler level control. The boiler level control itself again has got a stopcock which, which needs to be fully closed and our boiler coupling, we will take the split nut off on the centre part of the coupling. Leaving our sleeve and the split nut on the level control itself. We will then connect our tubing from our 16mm earth spigot hose assembly to the drain outlet. Okay, to connect our 16mm earth spigot hose assembly to our front boiler level control, it is easier to immerse the 16mm uh, hose into some hot water for approximately 20 seconds. We then connect the 16mm hose 
onto the drain, drain of our forward or front boiler control. Again, this will be tie wrapped. We will then uh, fit our one meter of 16 millimeter holes and we will insert this from outside to in through the largest of the holes on the side of the unit. Again, first of all, we'll immerse it in hot water for approximately 20 seconds. We then insert the hose to the largest hole, like so. It needs to be pushed in approximately one foot into the unit itself. We then connect our 16mm hose to our 16mm earth spigot hose assembly. So, and again this is tied up around here. We then pull the, the unit through, the 16mm cable through, until we get a gap of about 10mm between the boiler level control and the boiler output. We then connect our boiler level control to our boiler. First of all we put the split nut onto the boiler itself and the central piece of the connector. Sleeving must fit inside the boiler itself and inside the boiler control. And again our boiler coupling is then done up. Next we will connect our hoses to the various different connectors. With this hose assembly you will see we have identification number one and number two. Number one is fitted to the lower connector of the rear condenser and number two is connected to the lower connector of the front condenser. Number three is then connected to the top of our rear condenser and number four is connected to the top of our front condenser. Connection number five is then connected to our front boiler level control. Which leaves us one length of 8mm tubing which is fitted through the last small hole on the side of the chassis. Okay. We then connect our funnel into our front boiler level control, undo the black cap, fit the funnel and just tighten it. We will then connect our heaters to our boilers. The rear one first we take the black plastic cap off like so. We then insert the plastic cap onto our heater. Inside the cap is the seal. We then put this on like so and push it all the way to the rear. When you've got about an inch gap there, that's where we need the, the black cap. And we push the seal into the cap itself. Our heater is then inserted, like so, carefully in, and the black cap is then fastened up. The heater is then pushed into the gap, the cutout, at the end of the boiler itself, and the end of the heater just sits nicely in there. The black cap is then done up until hand tight. Do not over tighten this, as you could damage the heater. We then insert the front heater exactly the same as we inserted the rear heater. We then connect 
our two electrical connections from our heaters. The heater front connectors are then connected to the terminal block here, which is labelled front heater connector, blue to blue and brown to brown, and the rear heater connected to the rear two, which is labelled here, brown to brown and blue to blue. The lid and the side panel can then be connected. The lid has got six countersunk screws and the rear again has got six screws holding it on. The electrics can now be connected. You know, the electrics need to be connected by a qualified electrician and the cold water can also be fitted as well. Here you've got the mini valve assembly with the hose connected on as well there. And then we connect our reservoir water level sensor. This fits to the pressure switch connector at the top like so. This can then be placed inside the reservoir. Operate your Aquatron water still. Ensure that there's no leaks inside and everything's working normally. When everything is working normally, you can then fit the Perspex lid, which is fitted underneath the lid and dropped in place like so.